One of the things that you've, keep, uh, you've kept mentioning throughout mm. the show, and I actually <laughs> want to pinpoint you on this now, mm. I want to get something out of you, inshallah, is life changing. Yeah. You've mentioned multiple times, and every single person that we speak to pertaining to Hajj says these same two words, life changing. What's so life changing about Hajj? Um, how can I, where can I start? Um, how did it change your life? Like, or what, what, I mean, what, 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 mm. what did it make you realize? Or Okay, I'll, I'll tell you my story actually, how, um, so it was in uh, 2009, I wanted to take my sister and my grandmother on Hajj. And my grandmother, she's over 70, so she really wanted to do Hajj. And um, as, soon as, as soon as she was able to travel, and as soon as she had the means, she just wanted to do Hajj, so, uh, so I was going to take her. Uh, it was the Qadr that y y I booked for myself and, and my sister and my grandmother, and it was the Qadr that uh, I got accepted to Medina University. Now, when I got accepted to Medina, I get, a f I get, I get a flight now from the university to go to Medina. So I said to myself, let me cancel my Hajj. Because rather than paying lots of money, I'm going to get a free flight ticket from the university to Medina. And from Medina, I'll wait for my grandmother to come and then I'll take her on Hajj. So that, that, was, that was the idea. Um, unfortunately, I, I found out when I was in Medina that I can't do Hajj. I'm not allowed to do Hajj because I need to get like a visa for those who are residents. Okay. So I went everywhere just to apply legally to get this uh, visa, but no one was helping me out. And they, they, they were charging so much just for this piece of paper and I couldn't find this link. Okay. And when my grandmother arrived, she's over 70, she's got diabetes. I need to take her from Medina to, to Mecca, but I can't do it uh, legally anymore. SubhanAllah. <laughs> so I, I, I was making lots of dua. And some people were saying to me, if you do it illegally, there's a risk. Yeah. You might, you will get, uh, if you get, if you, if you get stopped, you might get deported back. Uh, okay. You might, um, you know, you, you might have to pay some fees, extra fees and so on. So when my grandmother came to Medina, I had five days to find a solution. Yeah. SubhanAllah. And I was taking her to the Haram and we were in Masjid al Nabawi and we were making dua. Time was getting closer and I had no hope. Every single link that I got was, was, was rejected until um, my, my grandmother was just about to leave and I bumped into a friend that I used to know in the UK just out of the sudden he was in Medina I didn't know why he was there I said what are you doing here he said I started working here and, I, and, and he said to me what's wrong you look a bit upset I said to him uh, I didn't, I didn't want to explain for like the 30th time to someone else my situation. I said to him, um, I want to do Hajj, but I can't. And, and I have to do it because I'm with my grandmother. So he said, SubhanAllah, I'm going to do Hajj in literally one hour. I'm going to leave to, to Mecca. And I have a link. There's a group coming from Jordan. They're coming by bus now from Jordan. They're going to be here exactly in one hour. And they've wow. got one more space for you. Wow. So I couldn't believe it. I said, Allahu Akbar, after five days, you know, of trying. And he said, but you wow. have to be here now because they're not going to wait for anyone. Yeah. So you I must have thought, forget my luggage, man. I took a taxi, went back to the university, yeah. went to my room. I put everything that I can in a bag. Yeah. Mess it was in a messy state. And then I left. Unfortunately, the university is so big and you're not allowed cars inside. You have to walk outside the university to stop a taxi. Okay. And I had 20 minutes left, and just to walk outside is 15 minutes. So I saw someone with a with a moped, yeah. motorbike, and I asked him, "Please, can I jump behind you?" And then he drove me outside the university. Allah and I managed Allah. to make it back to where what the bus story, is. What stories? <laughs> That's like something out of a movie. When uh, the the bus was full, in fact, they had three, four people who were standing, okay. and it turned out to be an illegal group. <laughs> All of them are doing Hajj without paper. And okay. I just found out on that spot. And the guy said to me, you have to pay X amount. I said, I don't care, I'll pay double the amount. I just need to do, do Hajj. Yeah. And then he said to me, unfortunately, we don't have space for you. Okay. After all that, and I got my Hajj, and I said to him, please, look, my grandmother's with me, she needs me. Uh, and, and he said, okay, just wait, just wait. And then, and then literally just two minutes before they left, he let me in.
Yeah. And I said, I don't mind standing, I just need to get there. Um, each checkpoint that we went past, I had to make dua that we don't get stopped. And all of them, uh, unfortunately, they weren't practicing Jordanians. Like some were like smokers and some were arguing and so on. But when it came to us crossing the checkpoint, they were all making dua. Yeah. And then when we left, Without any issues, they were all saying labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, happy that they, they went uh, through. Uh, just to cut a long story short, Alhamdulillah, I managed to, to make it to, to Mecca and I met my grandmother. And um, uh, at times, you know, I had to, like she, she got sick and stuff, I had to stay with her. Um, the point is, one of the benefits I'll, I'll, I'll share is the brotherhood, the sisterhood. Uh, a lot of the people that were in the same group as my grandmother, from the sisters, they helped her out when she was sick, uh, you know, they fed her. So that when you're in a state of, we're all in a state of ihram, we're all sleeping in a tent, we're all one, we're all equal, and the cooperation becomes stronger because we're in need of each other more. And one thing I realized that, subhanAllah, after we finished Hajj, we had four nights in a five-star hotel. Okay. Things were very different in the hotel because for like four or five days, we were all staying in a tent sleeping on the floor, whenever the food comes or whenever someone wants water, there was lots of cooperation, people were all, you know, Cheering. helping out and so on. When we went to the hotel after the Hajj was completed, there's luxurious rooms, big buffets, all the food that you want, all the juice that you want. I started seeing people were sitting separately and people were more self-sufficient, eating alone and and the, the unity and the closeness wasn't as close anymore because we're not really in need of each other anymore. So what made me love Hajj is that we were all like patient. Our, all of our situation was the same. So that made us closer. We had all of that in common. Uh, so I remember just lying down, some, mm. another brother next to me, and we're just sharing stories you know, of, of, of each other's lives. <coughs> just the main, one of the main things was the brotherhood, it makes you proud to be a Muslim part of the Ummah, but also the spiritual side and on the day of Arafah making dua on, in the mountain. Um, just renewing that, that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you feel like you have a new chapter now with Allah and all the duas that you make, that all the things that you want to change in your life, all the things that you want to do in your life, if it's worldly or, or from the Akhirah, and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah about people who do Hajj, that when they make dua during the Tawaf, they don't just say, give me good in the world. And they don't say, give me good in the Akhirah only. But they say, Ya Allah, give me good in this world. If it's, you know, success in, in, in university or work or with family and children. And then in the Akhirah, if it's going to Jannah, if it's, you know, being from the Muttaqeen, increasing the Iman and so on. You join both of them together. You know, one thing that uh, your story actually reminded me of, is um, when I went on Umrah, uh, fairly recently, and I remember this feeling when it was yeah, it, a life changing feeling that even Umrah, honestly, that I, I felt when I was there, it was like um, because you're in a in places, Mecca, Medina, mm. that are so, um, if I can say, uh, holy, yeah. you know, they're so holy, those places, yeah. it's like everyone around you is there for their purpose yeah. of life. And that mm. re it really, when you're there, it really puts that perspective into your mm. mind that, wow, this is actually the purpose of life. And you actually mm. feel it. You actually yeah. really, really feel it. You can't believe you're there sometimes. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. It's yeah. amazing. You know, there, there was times where uh, I remember actually, I'll tell a short story, very short story before we go for the next break. But like, it was so tiring, you know, at times. It was so yeah. tiring. And, and my feet have never been swollen in my whole life. Mm. Um, and that is the first time my feet were swollen because of the amount we were walking, tawaf, it was so, um, like, it, it was a lot yeah. on, on your feet especially. So I remember I woke, we, we woke up one night for Fajr and I started feeling a bit demotivated, you know, and I thought, you know, you're, 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 you're within the haram, you know, in your hotel. You know, the brothers went, I was in the toilet, I thought, you know, why don't you just pray and then go sleep, you know, you're tired. So I prayed in the room and I went and I lay down in the bed. And then while I'm in the bed, in the hotels, they play the iqama out loud. So I hear the iqama going off. And I just think, to I remember thinking to myself, I can't do this, man. I got out of bed, I put my sober, I went down. And it's like, 
Alhamdulillah, the way they've made the hot were very close. So I joined, I joined the salah. It's like that environment. You can't, even if you mm -hmm. want to, mm -hmm. you can't. You can't miss out. Do you know it's what, subhanAllah, crazy. even even you guys talk about brotherhood and we start mm. talking about the brotherhood and sisterhood in in, in Hajj. Um, I had a similar experience at Umrah where you know we were it was during fast well, during Ramadan and while we were doing tawaf, people were just spraying cold water on people's faces yeah. to cool them down. Mm. And that alone just felt like subhanAllah the love between the brothers. Mm. You, that you long for that feeling at that point, it's so hot and you're so hungry. Mm. Uh, so yeah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.